Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to my presentation on income distribution in America. In this presentation, you're going to find answers for almost any question you could ever have in regards to how much people make, how they make that money, how they're taxed on that money, and how they spend that money. All of the information comes from one source, the IRS. For individual corporate taxes and income, I use irs.gov forward slash tax stats. And for all the information I provide on the top 403 billionaires, you can see the link here on the screen if you want to look into that. Here's the income changes in the United States from 1947 to 2007. You can see here is the top 5%. Down here is the bottom 25, the next 25 to 50, the next 50 to 75, and then the top 25%. You can see here in 1947, the average person in the top 5% made right around $60,000. And today, the people in the top 5% make close to $200,000, or in 2007. I use 2007-2008 data because of the accuracy it provides. You can see here further how income was distributed from 1947 to 2007. This big number here being the top 5%, and then this number right here being that same top 5% in 2007. And you can see how income has been taken from the other different brackets to make this number increase. Basically, the top 25% have not changed. So all of that additional income has come from these three sources. You can see here further how I broke all this information down, being the average income for the bottom 20%, the average income for the next 20 to 40 percent. There's a link in the bottom of the underbar if you want to take a look at this presentation or of course you can hit pause. The next 40 to 60 percent from 1989 to 2007 and then again average income for the next 60 to 80 percent. The top 10 percent changes and then that next 80 to 90 percent and then you can see here the average income of the top 1 percent from 89 to 2007 and the changes from 1989 to 2007 for the top 400. Here I also provide all the changes in regards to total combined net income of all U.S. corporations. In 1992, you can see that they had a total income of around $371 billion, while in 2007, that number was approaching $1.3 trillion. So in a short period of time, you can see a dramatic increase in the total income for U.S. corporations. I'm going to look at this much more deeply later. And then I further break all this down into real numbers so you can see everything here on the screen. The bottom 20% had an average income in 89 of 9600 and today that number is at 12300 and then you can see all the other different brackets as I break them out here on the screen and how they've changed quite dramatically. And then here I provide more accurate information in regards to income for corporations in 1992 versus 2007. Further break this down from 1989 to 2007, these bars representing total income and how that is allotted. This pink bar representing the top 10%, and then this little tiny insignificant bar down here representing the bottom 20 and you could see how this compares by just adding this up. So this would be the bottom 20, this would be the bottom 40, 60, 80, and so forth and so on. And then this is a as a combined group, and this number over here represents billions of dollars. You can see how that money has been allocated to all the other different groups. Here, now looking at the top 5%, and then the 10 to 25%, and you can see just how dramatically, by looking at this information from multiple different angles, how these numbers have increased dramatically. Then again, we can look at income distribution in 1980 versus 2008 using that same data. And as you can see, the top 5% of incomes have ballooned from 21% to 35% over this period of time. And you can see where loss in income from these other brackets has allowed this number to balloon. So what percentage of the top 5% of income actually goes to the top 1%. That number has also gone up dramatically. You can see here that in 1989, the percentage of the total income of the top 1% in relation to the top 5% went from representing about 50% to representing about 61% over here in 2007. And then this is really important because a lot of people don't really ever focus on this. This is the total corporate income before deductions in the United States. And I'm going to focus really here on 2005 because this really stands out. In 2005, the combined total income of all corporations in the United States came very close to $2 trillion. If you look in the next slide, watch this number drop, remember, $2 trillion. And here in 2005, you can see that that number dropped to right around $310 billion. So it went from $2 trillion before deductions to right around $310 billion after deductions. What a lot of people don't know is that corporations only pay income tax on a very small percentage, right around 25% of their total income. And you can see that demonstrated here corporate income before compared to corporate income after deductions in 1980. That number was right around 25%. That means they were only paying income taxes on right around 25% of their total income. And if we come over here to 2005, you can see they were paying very, very close to 15% in their most profitable of years. 
And what a lot of people don't know is corporations spend their income and then they have to pay taxes on what is left thereafter. In comparison to the total polar opposite for regular people, they first pay their taxes and then they try to live off of what is left thereafter that. So that is the major difference between corporate taxes versus individual taxes in the United States. And here you can see exactly what people spend money on. This is the average U.S. citizen and exactly what they're spending their money on on a percentage basis. I find this to be quite interesting. What is really interesting though is how these numbers don't dramatically change as we look at different income levels. You can see here for the bottom 20% what they spend money on. Really you want to focus here on insurance and pensions and investments. That's 2% for the bottom 20%. That's why they don't have any money to save and then also look at the changes in housing, being this is 39%, and how all these other numbers change as we move forward. So this is the middle 20%. You can see they spend 33% on average on housing, and you can see their investments into insurance as well as retirement accounts has jumped up to 9%. And I find it quite amusing that the food hasn't changed that much. See, it went from 17 to 15%. You can, of course, see a dramatic drop off in utilities, this little orange bar down here, if we look at the next one, especially if you jump up to the top 20%. But you can still see that housing is still quite big, but major, major difference is the total amount that's set aside in retirement accounts and insurance. That is what is growing. And then, of course, things like utilities and so forth are falling. So what exactly are the tax rates in the United States? Well, this is what everyone is supposed to pay. I could go through all this and it would really bore you to tears, so I'm not going to. Again, if you want to look at this closely, pause the movie. But you can see here, this is what you would really want to focus on. People earning over $373,000 per year are supposed to pay 35%. That is very, very important, as you're going to see here in a second. Now, if we look at what people actually pay, from 2001 to 2008, the top 0.1% who are all supposed to be paying 35%, Instead, in 2008 numbers, are paying right around 11%. So they're supposed to be paying 35, they're paying 11. And that number has dropped off dramatically from 2001, whenever it was 13%. But you can see, over this period of time, nobody's paying what they should be paying. We then look at the top 1% from 1980 to 2008. Again, everyone's supposed to be paying 35 in federal taxes, and they were paying 35 in 1980, but you can see that number's dropped dramatically down here to paying right around 22%. We then move on to the top 5%, who all should be paying 35. Again, 1980 they were paying 27, and today they're paying right around 20. Then we look at the 5 to 10% that are supposed to be paying on average around 30, they're paying right around 12. The top 10 to 25, who should be paying 30, are paying right around 9. The top 25 to 50% are paying right around 6.5. Then you have the bottom 50% who are paying right around 6 in 1980 and are now paying right around 2. Then you have federal taxation on corporations. Well, remember, they're only paying taxes on 25% of their total income. Even that being, you can see here, there's the magical 2005. They paid almost 15. And then in 2008, they paid right over 22% on 25% of their income. That's very, very important. And then you see the tax rate for the top billionaires in the United States. In 1992, they were paying right around 20%. And now they're paying right around 18 to 19%. So let's look at tax revenue that has been lost in just one year, 2008. It was just picked because it was the most recent and best information I had available to me. The amount not paid by the top 50% was $1.2 trillion. Remember, this is the difference between the tax rate that they paid at and what they should have been paying. Then we look at the total amount lost by the bottom 50%. You can see this number is dramatically smaller. And then we look closer at corporate taxable income. If they had a total income of 900 78 billion or almost a trillion dollars. If they were taxed at 35%, they should have paid $342 billion, but instead they paid $228 billion. So that comes out to a total loss for corporations of $113 billion. You can see these numbers balloon. This is just in one year. Then while I'm going to take a quick look here at state average taxes, this is the average amount that each individual in the state pays for state taxes. So in Hawaii, they have the highest state taxes per capita of $1,832. Remember, these are all averages. You can see all the other numbers here. And if you live in Alaska, Delaware, Montana, New Hampshire, or Oregon, you are paying nothing. And you can see who has the highest tax rates, being California, Indiana, Mississippi, New Jersey, and Rhode Island. And the lowest, again, Alaska, Delaware, Montana, New Hampshire, and Oregon, where you pay nothing. Then we look at state local taxes, X school tax. If I would have tried to figure out school tax, my head would have exploded. So I'm just providing you with just your average local taxes in these states. You can see who pays the highest local taxes on the left side. And over here, there are zero taxes. Again, X school tax. Who has the highest amount in gas taxes? Remember, this is the amount of tax that's tacked on per gallon. You see California, New York, Hawaii, Connecticut, and Illinois have the highest rate. And then the lowest amount of taxes on gasoline is listed on the right side of your screen. 
Then we look at corporate state taxes. Iowa has the highest, then Pennsylvania, Minnesota, Alaska, and New Jersey. These are corporate taxes. And then if you move to Nevada, North Dakota, Texas, Washington, or Wyoming, you pay nothing. And these are also the states that are setting up what are called dynasty trusts that are used by very wealthy people to try and escape estate taxes altogether. The reason why estate taxes were created was to help eliminate the creation of elite groups of very, very wealthy people who held on to large sums of money. I have another presentation on net worth if you want to check that out. I provide a link on the screen. What a lot of people don't realize is 99.7% of total estates are not subject to estate taxes at all. And this is based off of research provided by the Brookings Tax Policy Center. And many of the people that are against estate taxes say that the reason they are against estate taxes is that they do not want to hurt small businesses and farms. What you can see here is less than 1.3% of this number right here. So 0.3% of Americans ever pay estate taxes. Of this, only 1.3% of that tiny fraction is made up of small businesses and farms. Very, very, very tiny percentage of the total population in the United States. And a lot of other people that are against estate taxes say that the reason they're against them is because of double taxation, meaning that they believe that individuals earn income and they are taxed on that income throughout their life, and then they are again forced to pay income on that income whenever they die. For the most part, the reason why capital gains are considered good is that they are largely payments on unrealized capital gains. An increase in the value of an asset is almost never subject to income tax if the asset is held until a person dies. What they mean by that is if somebody goes and buys a stock, say 40 years ago, and that stock continues to grow in overall worth, quadrupling in value, as long as that asset is not sold, nobody is ever going to pay a tax on it. And that is the reason why the IRS says that we need estate taxes, is to have taxes paid on that stock, for example, whenever this person passes on. In 2001, anyone who had a total estate minus all deductions and so forth of less than $675,000 was exempt from estate taxes altogether. If you were over this number, you paid 55% on that total estate to the federal government. However, from 2002 to 2010, the estate tax fell from 55% in regards to tax rate to 45% and then to 0% in 2010. The IRS has estimated through this decrease in overall estate taxing, they have lost over $700 billion dollars to over a trillion dollars just over this 2002 to 2010 period and currently we are set up so that anyone who has an estate less than five million dollars is exempt and if you fall over that number you're going to pay just 35 percent this is 2011 where we are right now as I do this presentation. So if they lost 700 billion to a trillion over eight years, with people paying 55 to 45%, you can only imagine how much money is gonna be lost based off of this current estate tax system that we have today. Now I get to the elite 403 billionaires in the United States. This is the acclaimed Forbes 400. They have a total estimated net worth of 1.7 trillion. This number is dramatically below what it actually is because it does not count trust or any money that has been provided to nonprofit corporations and, and numerous other different ways of moving net worths around. These 400 or 403 actually have a total income in 2008 of $109 billion, just 400 people. This equates to an average income for this top 400 of $274 million. Just in one year, 400 people earn $274 million on average. And as you can see here, these billionaires are also very good in regards to using tax deductions to escape paying taxes on their income. Right here, you can see in 1992, they paid taxes on only 66% of their total income. That number shot up to right around a little over 71%. That means they're, if they get 100% of their income in, they're only paying taxes on 72% of it. And as you can see here, that number has continued to fall in 2003, being right around 68%. And then it has risen slightly to 2008, where they're paying just slightly over 68%. So that is the percentage of income that they actually pay taxes on for the top 403 billionaires. Then we can look closely here at exactly where their income comes from. Here, this big giant pie slice right here represents capital gains. Capital gains are taxed at 15%. And historically, they have been taxed near there, being in 1942, where they were taxed at 25%, 78%, 28%, 81 20 and then today where we are, which is 15 A lot of people think that this used to be taxed as ordinary income. No, that is not true. Then you can see wages represented 36% in 1992. That has dropped the whole way down to 13%. 
because the wealthiest have decided to escape paying taxes, they would rather this money be paid to them through capital gains and dividends, which allows them to escape paying taxes. And as you can see here, in 2003, the dividend rate, which used to be counted as ordinary income, dropped down to 15%. So that means the wealthiest people in the nation are able to pay only 15%, even though they should pay 35%, they're only paying 15% on 79% of their total income. So that's the reason why the total tax rate that they are paying is as low as it is. And I provide here a chart that represents the total taxes lost whenever they lowered the tax rate on dividends from ordinary income, which would have been 35% for the whole way down to 15%. You can see that this total number in tax revenue lost because of that tax change, that one little change from 2003 to 2008, has equaled out to a total loss in tax revenue for the federal government of $65 billion. And then I broke everything down here further. In 1992, the average income of households for the bottom 80% of United States citizens is 33600 And then that number jumped up in 2008 to $41,125. If you compare that to the average income of the top 403 Three billionaires in the United States, they earned on average 1,817 times as much in 1992 as the average bottom 80% of United States households. And that number has jumped in 2008 to represent 6,670 times the average income for the bottom 80% of households in the United States. And I have a whole entire presentation on Social Security and Medicare, but I keep getting asked this question, so I thought I'd cover it one more time. This is the amount that the average United States citizen receives on Social Security whenever they retire. $1,077.20 per month, or $6.73 per hour. And then on how that money is spent by those senior citizens on a monthly basis. If you have any other questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. Till next time.